Hi, welcome you all. Thanks so much for joining. Um, you're welcome to write in the chat where you're coming from and if you can hear me all right. And if there's anything in particular that you want to work on in this yin practice. And then we'll get started just in about a minute. I hope everyone's had a good Tuesday and feeling all right. I see some lower back requests, so we'll definitely be working on that. Um, you know, most of Yin is really focused on connective tissue around the joints. Um, so in a more vinyasa or hatha class, we'll work a little bit more on the muscles. But for Yin, you get really into the nitty gritty of how those muscles connect to bone. So the focus areas will definitely be in the hips um, and in the lower back and we'll try and kind of move up the spine and um, into the shoulders a bit. And let's see if there's any other requests. Volume is good, great, that's wonderful. So, and also um, let me see if I can just give people, if they're interested in a playlist, then I can put it into the box as well. So I did list it um, on the Instagram post and it's also online. It's on, it's on Spotify and it's called Waterman51920 um, Yoga Moves Us. So hopefully you can find it and you can really um, start that playlist at any time. So we'll get go, go ahead and get started in a comfortable position. You're welcome to have you know, any kind of blocks or support or cushions. Sometimes it can be nice to sit on those. Um, really take care of yourselves. You know, this is... Um, an online format so I can't be in your presence unfortunately to adjust or modify so um, you know take care of yourself if you've been active today then you might come into these poses a little easier um, and if this is your first practice of the day or you haven't practiced in a while um, then you might want to take a little more time so let's just sit up nice and tall Begin to breathe in and out of the nose. And take some time to ground here. Feeling the tailbone root down. And the crown of the head lift up. Welcome yourself into this space and this time. Listen for sounds around you and feel the ground beneath you and come into your space and know that if you may be in a room alone in your home or maybe with a friend or partner there is a greater, broader community that brings us together through Yoga Moves Us. And take a moment to connect now 
to each other and to that community. And gently drop the chin towards the chest. Even though this is a yin class, I will invite in a little bit of movement around the joints and we'll just gently start with some neck rolls, three in each direction. And taking your time. Feel free to move as you wish. And then coming back up to center, extend the left arm out to the left and then allow the right ear to fall over towards the right shoulder, getting a nice little stretch along the neck and shoulder. So generally in this class, we'll ask you to kind of get into the posture have a moment to explore the posture with some movement and then to sustain the posture for a bit. So again, as you explore here, you can welcome in tucking the chin or opening it up. Sometimes I like to dance my fingertips back or forward a bit and find a place and take a couple breaths here. And come back through center and then we'll reach the right arm out to the right and the left ear over to the left shoulder you're welcome to let out any noises or releases moans or grunts sometimes it helps to actually pull out the tension through a vocalization Again, maybe explore here a bit with tucking or tilting the chin, walking the fingertips back. And then find a place to stay. Nice. And then come back through center. We'll just do some gentle shoulder rolls forward and back. switch directions just starting to ignite and send signals to these different joints and then we're going to really focus here on kind of the abdominal region and just do some nice little abdominal circles maybe five in each direction you can kind of pull the belly in as you angle back and push the chest forward when it feels good you can change directions Nice. And again, coming into just really focusing on the breath, we'll, we can start now coming onto our backs and laying down into Supta Baddha Konasana. So the soles of the feet come together, knees come out, coming onto the back. Here I like to kind of push into the elbows a little bit to puff up the chest and then release the arms. Again, find your posture. Maybe explore a little bit by shifting the weight side to side and feeling sensation in the back. few more breaths here, just allowing the hips to open gently. And then slowly bringing the knees together. 
and placing the feet on the floor. So, you know, as you explore and then you kind of surrender into the pose, you're welcome to come back out into exploration or ease off if the posture becomes too strenuous. So from here, we'll extend the left leg long on the mat and bring the right knee into the chest and squeezing here. Close your eyes and try and explore sensation in the hips. One more nice squeeze in here. And then we'll cross the right knee over the left side body, extending the right arm out to the right. Again, just take a moment to come in. And then maybe exploring. So exploration here might mean kind of tucking that left shoulder under a little more, getting a little more of the back squared on the mat and maybe extending a little bit more deeper. Even a little rocking motion may be nice. And then settling into stillness here. Allow the chest to fill with breath. Two more breaths here. And then gently coming back to center, squeezing both knees into the chest just for a moment, maybe rocking a little, feeling any release in the lower back. And then squeezing in on the left knee, extending the right leg long. Explore your edge a bit here. Different sensations in the joint of kind of pulling the knee straight towards the body or maybe out a bit towards the side. Have this conversation with the soft tissue. Yin allows for these deeper conversations with the body. And when you feel ready, gently coming into the twist bringing the left knee over towards the right and extending the left leg long. Again, I like to come in maybe about 70% for the first couple breaths. Just letting my body adjust. And then I can Kind of lift and tuck that right shoulder under a bit and get a little bit more of a twist. And send the breath to the belly. Send the breath to the hips.
I also invite you during kind of the exploration stages to also, you know, touch different parts of the body that you feel sensation and maybe get a little micro adjustment there. I know for me, I'm missing hands on assists at yoga studios. And so what we can do in the meantime is work on our self assisting. So for your example, I can take my hands, put it on my left hip and kind of push directly down to accentuate the stretch. Take one more breath here and gently come back through center. Squeezing the knees in, again, maybe a little rock. And then we'll gently begin to rock forward and back along the spine. And then crossing the legs and making your way on to hand and knees. And just kind of really feeling this out here, feeling the support in the shoulders. And then we'll come into three cat and cow. So inhaling, arch the spine. Exhale, curl in. Inhale, lift up. Full breath, exhale, can engage with Yana Banda here if you'd like, and even pull the spine back slightly. One more time, inhale, exaggerate, exhale. And then just come into some gentle hip circles here, or any movement that feels natural, maybe some figure eights. So really like to kind of circle into the hip joints a little, maybe three quick ones in each direction if you want a little more activity. Otherwise, you can stay perfectly still. Again, we're just kind of lubing up the joints. A little bit of motion, switching over to the other leg. And then coming back to stillness here, finding a nice tabletop nice engagement of the belly and we'll lift our right arm up to the sky getting a nice twist here and then exhale thread the right hand underneath the left arm and rest the right shoulder if you can on the mat below the left hand can stay right here or you can even reach up and around should be an effort in the hips to be pushing back and then just settle in one more breath in and out. Inhale, unthread the arm, reach it back up, and exhale, release it down. And we'll switch to the other hand, reaching it up to the sky, getting a nice opening in the chest. Exhale, thread it through. One more breath here. On your next inhale, reach the arm back up, stretch, and exhale, release down. And then we'll just open up the knees here and sit back down into a child's pose. 
Coming here, resting the forehead on the mat. Stay here for another five breaths, allowing the hips to push back. If you want to engage more, you can lift the elbows off the ground, get a bit of a stretch in the shoulders, but otherwise just surrender in. Just going to check the chat to see how everyone's doing. Really feeling the contact with the forehead, with the mat below, allowing your thoughts and any worries to kind of settle out, allow them to ground down. And then gently coming back up, scooting the knees back a little bit. We're going to come to lay down on our bellies. So if you want to do it gently, you can come on to your forearms, move them forward, and we'll come into Sphinx pose. Um, I always call this like little kids reading a book pose. You know, we used to read like this, and as adults, we usually don't. Can have a nice, kind of a 90 degree angle here with your arms and you should feel a compression in the lower back if you have a very flexible lower back you can extend the arms forward coming all the way up into seal pose for me i'm gonna rest and start with my 70 percent the contact of the pelvic floor on the mat below. And find a lengthening in the spine and almost a lifting <clears throat> to try and relieve a little bit of that compression in the lower back. So even though it's bending back, there's still a lengthening forward. listening to the body and sometimes the longer we stay in these poses the more difficult the conversation becomes with the joints or different parts of the body and so take your time and slow down with the conversation See if you can listen. Just two more breaths here. And then gently lower. And you can make a little pillow with your hands. Just let the spine release. Maybe a gentle little rock of the hips side to side. And just come to stillness here. Focus 
focus on the sensation of the mat below you. And feeling the sensation of gravity magnetically pull you down. And feel the earth hold you close. The next pose is going to be a one-legged frog um, with an option of an arm adjustment. So since I'm facing this side, I'll start. I'm going to bring my left knee out to the left, my left foot out to the left. I'm kind of looking for three right angles here at the hip, at the knee, and at the ankle. If you're very open in your hips, you can place a block below the knee. And then again, kind of take some time to squirm around and adjust to square the hips forward, make your pillow and release. Might give a little wiggle with your right foot, the straight leg. Feeling sensation in the quadricep muscles up through the hip joint. One last breath here. And then gently straighten the left leg behind you. Just come back into Sphinx for a moment just to kind of let the hips settle down. And then we'll move to a one-legged frog on the other leg. And again, if you use the block, you might want to use it on the other side. I like to kind of come up on my forearms to lift the right leg up. Again, kind of finding those right angles, squaring my left hip, and then settling in. If you do find these kind of difficult conversations with these areas or places of tension, really use the breath there. Ease off a little bit, deep breaths, and then slowly, as you surrender, the body will kind of naturally move in a little deeper. If there's actual pain, then you need to back off a bit more or take a different posture. Two more breaths here, feeling the hips. And then gently release the leg, straighten it back, coming back into Sphinx Pose. Again, shifting the hips out. And then we're slowly gonna begin to lift back up walking the knees a little closer and as I do this after coming out of a back bend I kind of like to snake the body a little bit side to side coming on to the hands and knees and again coming into just easing out of that lower back bend kind of walking the hands back bring the knees together 
and then you can sit down on the knees. You can stay facing the same direction if you like. And then from here, we're just gonna lengthen the arms up nice and tall. So neutralizing the spine after the back bend. You can interlace and release the index fingers or just have prayer hands reaching straight up. Tuck the tailbone a little bit. I'm actually gonna face this way so you can see it a little better. Just really nice and tall, finding so much length. Take one more deep breath in here. And on the exhale, open the arms and twist over to the left. Right hand comes to the left knee, left arm comes behind you. Every breath in, lengthening up a bit, and on the exhales, twisting a little deeper. If it's hard to sit on your feet, you can always sit on a block here too, or a cushion. One last breath in, lengthening up, and an exhale, twisting a little more. And then gently come back through center. Reach the arms up long, straight overhead again. One breath in here. And exhale, open up over to the right. While this will get to the lower back, we're also kind of churning the belly, using the breath to massage kidneys, and the digestive system. And final breath in, lengthening up, and an exhale, twisting a little deeper. And gently come back through center and crawl forward coming back on to hands and knees and then you'll take your left leg and extend it straight back pressing into the heel a little stretch in the calf muscle and then if you can lift the right knee up place it preparing for half pigeon on the right side so the right leg is forward and then you can slowly settle down into that if there's a lot of space below your right thigh and butt, you can always use a block to sit there. And I'll go through this a little bit, and if this isn't working for you, just sit up and watch, and I'll provide an alternative posture. Um, but if you are in pigeon, which is in an upright pigeon, almost like seal, you are also getting this lower lumbar stretch here. So really just enjoy that again, maybe a little movement to explore. And then when you're ready, really extending the spine forward and releasing over the right leg. If it's hard to come down here, welcome to use a pillow. So if you're here and you're comfortable, stay and relax. If this doesn't work for you, the option, and this is good for all yogis who pigeon isn't, isn't working, you can come onto your back, hook your right foot on your left knee, and then bring that knee toward into the chest, holding at the back of the thigh, or threading the right arm through and squeezing in. can see this is kind of, if I start, if I'm in this position and I wrap and extend, then I'm very much in a similar forward folding pigeon. And wherever you are, you can 
continue to breathe. Continue to cherish this time with your body. And this time to nourish and calm the body. And stay where you are for another three breaths. And then if you're in forward folded pigeon, you can come up and we'll bring the left leg. So the left knee comes up to meet the right foot and the left toes point out. So you're kind of in like a deer pose. So this is what it looks like from the side and then this is what it'll look like from the front. If you were in reclined, re reclined um, modification, then you can come up and also join us. And then this is what it would look like kind of sitting from and forward and then we'll reach up again before doing so you can kind of lift and again tuck that right hip under so you feel nice and square and then reach the arms up and exhale fold forward releasing the head exploring the posture or fixing your hair and then really explore here how the shift in the weight of the hands maybe over to the left a little bit can also change the dynamics of the posture. slowly walk the hands back up and then from here you're gonna lean over to the right grab the left leg we're gonna come into the same position on the other side so the left leg comes in front and the right leg goes behind toes out and then from here we're just gonna because we this right hip that we were kind of um, had a bit of a tourniquet effect on it in the half pigeon and then that next posture in deer, we're gonna try and open this up then to allow a little bit more blood flow. So from here, you'll reach the left arm back, press in and lift up, reach the right arm up and back, take five breaths here. gently release down really nice and then you can lean to the left grab the right leg and bring both legs forward see if you can hover the feet if you can't you can put them down and then from here we're going to shift to the other side so the left leg will come forward and the right leg is going to swing all the way back coming into half pigeon on the left side And again, my left hip is um, special and has a little bit more <laughs> issues. Um, so if you wanna use a block again here, you can feel into the back bend for a moment. And when you're ready, you can fold forward.
allowing yourself to deepen in a little bit more. Again, if this isn't comfortable, then you can do the same variation on your back, just pulling the left leg in. long steady breaths you can travel all the way to the hip joints and take two more breaths here And then slowly begin to lift the body up. You can lean over to the left hip and then bring the right foot up so the right toes are pointing out. Again, kind of in this deer pose, reaching up straight, maybe tucking a little bit, flush, lift up, and then extend forward. Just a few breaths here. Explore walking the hands over to the right a bit. A little side body stretch. And then slowly walking back up. And leaning to the left, unhooking, we're going to switch back just one time with the right leg forward and the left leg back. Bringing the right hand behind you, pressing up, lifting up, opening up this left hip, fresh blood rushing through the joints. One more breath, and then gently release down. Bring the knees forward. Place the soles of the feet on the mat. Wrap your hands around your legs. Rest your forehead on your knees. And take a moment to feel love Gently lift back up. Extend the legs straight in front of you. You can lift or shimmy the hips back a little. Coming into staff pose. So this is kind of an engaged pose here. We're going to press the ground away from us so our shoulders are nice and tall and also flex the feet here. Feeling nice and proud through the chest bones. Turning our kind of self-love into courage and pride through the chest. Moving the energy up. And gently release out of that. Press the soles of the feet back into the mat. 
scoot forward so you can lay down and fit on your mat. I like to kind of keep my arms out to the side and slowly lower down. And then once you're there, we'll just come into a brief um, bridge pose just to get a little bit of compression and Jalandhara Bandha. And as I said, kind of starting from the hips, and the belly and the spine, we move this energy up. through the different chakra channels. So just let the, let the lower back really settle in here. Feel the sweetness and softness. And then when you're ready, if you have a block, um, you can use it here for support. Otherwise you can just lift up and hold here. We're only gonna hold for maybe 15 seconds. 15 to 30 seconds. If you do have a block, you can place it just at the lower hips. It should feel really good. You can pop the chest a little. Close the eyes. One more breath in, and then gently release. Remove the block if you have one. And then bring the elbows down by your side. Extend the legs long, and we're gonna come into fish pose. So prop yourself up on your forearms, open up the throat, and lean back. Let the crown of the head touch the floor. The crown chakra meeting the earth. And open the mouth here. Ah. A lion's breath if you like, which I love. I'm going to do two more. Ah. Ah. Gently lift the head and come down onto your back. the legs, coming into final rest, Shavasana. If you'd like to tuck the shoulders, you can here. If you want a blanket, adjust and explore for just a few moments. I'm going to sit up for your Shavasana, but please stay rested. eyes closed. Allow the body to settle. Again, feel the force of gravity holding you. And your beautiful breathing body being held. Become highly aware of the vibrational sensation in the body. Maybe a pulse or a tingle.
tune into these pathways as the body is still and the circuits are smooth. Become aware of the air that surrounds the body, and the energy around you. And feel how the breath connects our inner energy to the space and energy around us. Begin to wiggle the fingers into that space. And begin to wiggle the toes and shift as you like. Reach your arms up long overhead. Take a nice, nice, nice long stretch. Breathe in deeply and exhale out. <sighs> Two more like that. Breathe in. <sighs> Last one. <sighs> And gently roll over to one side and make your way up to a seated position. And bring your hands to heart center. And closing the eyes. sense and feel if there are any shifts in the body or the mind. And taking a moment of love for ourselves, bowing the head to the hands. And taking a moment just to connect with the community out there and thank you all so much for joining us hope to see you again namaste feel free to add any chats or send me any questions um, thanks so much for coming and um, yeah hope to see you again take care have a good evening